to another episode of Spoiled by Beth. Today, I am going to be talking about Razorhurst by, give me a moment, I can never get this right, it is Justine Labalestier. I think that's how you pronounce it. There's a lot of letters in there, a lot of syllables, and I think it's French, but she's Australian, so who really knows? So before I get into it, I will say I liked this book. If you look at my pro-con list, you would think I would not like this book, but I do. My biggest issue was that whenever I walked away and came back, it took a good 10 minutes to be able to reconnect with the story. And I don't know why that is. Maybe there was something else going on in my head that had my mind elsewhere. But forewarning, give it a chance. If you pick it up and you're like, uh, just give it a couple chapters and, and see what you think. And then if you still don't like it, I give you permission to put it down. The plot of Razorhurst. It is another one of those where I thought it was going to be something completely different. <laughs> and so when I got it from the library and I read the summary, I was like, why did I pick up this book? It's about a young girl named Kelpie who can see ghosts. And she comes in contact with another young woman named Dimphna Campbell, who this is like 1930s Australia. For a good portion of this novel, I thought we were in England because a number of the, the places have the same names, but we are in Australia. At this point, guns have been outlawed, and so men called razor men had taken over the town and instead of using guns they used razors but there were two main mob bosses there's Mr. Davidson and then there's Gloriana Nelson. Dimphna works for Gloriana basically she's a prostitute <laughs> but she's like the highest paid prostitute in the whole city you don't really get a whole lot about her business you know that she's wealthy enough to have moved out of Gloriana's house and she has her own place but we, we, we don't really know much about the business, except that yes, she is still in the business. The deal is Dimphna can see ghosts too. The difference between her and Kelpie is that nobody, she has never let anybody know that she can see ghosts. From the moment she started seeing them until the moment that she meets Kelpie, she has never let on that she can see them. Whereas Kelpie has. Kelpie interacts with ghosts, or at least she does to some extent. She realizes it's not necessarily healthy for her to interact with all ghosts she sees. So Dimphna, once she realizes that Kelpie can see ghosts, she's like, I gotta keep this kid with me. They meet because Kelpie runs across a ghost who is like, look, if you go into that building, you can find apples. And given that Kelpie lives on the street, she, she doesn't get apples very often, but she doesn't get food often. And so she knows she shouldn't listen to this particular ghost, but she does it anyways. And so when she sneaks into this house, she finds Dimphna standing over the body of her dead boyfriend, Jimmy Palmer, who comes back as a ghost and basically haunts them the rest of the book because ghosts, as we know, haunt places, or in this case, haunt people. Now they're on the run because, and this is a little confusing for me, because I guess times have changed, but they're on the run because Dimphna in particular is afraid that she's going to get blamed for it. And I guess it's because she has earned the moniker, the angel of death, because all of her boyfriends tend to die. So I, I, get, I guess that's why she decides to run. And of course, she wants uh, Kelpie to come with her because they're kindred ghost spirits. And so Kelpie then leads Dimphna to basically the only place she can think about. And that is the home of uh, this guy named Neil Darcy. He basically hides them while the police come by. And then they go here and there and everywhere. And, and then we end. Like, obviously, there's other things in between. Maybe what, what we're really trying to get away from is Dimphna is being pursued by Mr. Davidson, who is essentially Gloriana Nelson's arch enemy. 
And then before Jimmy had died, he and Dimphna had been planning to get rid of him so that they could then be kingpins themselves. It's kind of confusing, so I'm, I'm sorry I can't give you anything better than that. With that very vague and unsatisfying book summary under my belt, I'm going to get into some of the things that really bothered me about this book. Remember, I did like the book. Overall, it was a very engaging story. However, there were just some things that stuck with me. And one of them is the ghost aspect. But before I get into the ghost aspect, I want to talk about Diphna and Kelpie because the whole ghost thing is the reason they're even together. So, as I mentioned, Dimphna brings Kelpie along because she sees that Kelpie has the same gift as her. And when you read the book jacket, you think that that is going to play a huge part because Dimphna wants to teach Kelpie the ways of dealing with ghosts. But the thing is, Jimmy Palmer, because he dies and attaches himself to, to Dimphna and she does not want him to know that she can see or hear him, she doesn't say a word about being able to see ghosts to Kelpie until the last, like, one-fourth of the book. Not even one-fourth, like, one-eighth of the book. And that was really irritating to me because I thought it was going to be a bigger deal. Aside from the fact that they were together the entire time, they had nothing to do with each other. They did not have deep, meaningful conversations. They didn't get to know each other. It was just like, we're in it together and Dimphna cannot, like, literally, physically cannot let go of Kelpie because she's afraid of losing the one person who has the same skill as her. And so I was just like, what's the point in emphasizing something that you're not even going to address for most of the book? Speaking of Dimphna and Kelpie, Kelpie, by nature of her upbringing, which was on the streets, has obviously been malnourished. And so she, even though she is 16, she looks more like an 11 year old. Whereas Dimphna, and here's the real spoiler people, she has led a much more mature lifestyle. So she behaves much more maturely. And you think she's like 19 or 20. She is also only 16. And that really bothered me because Kelpie, I guess again, by nature of her lifestyle, the fact that she essentially had been isolated for most of her life, you know, with the exception of the ghosts that she came in contact with, she felt like a child. She came across as extremely juvenile and naive, whereas Dimphna, I mean, you really thought she was a, an older woman, an experienced, a worldly woman. And so then when, sorry, La Balassier dumps this on us that they're the same age, I was just like, why did we need to know that? Like, why is that coming into play? Except now that Jimmy, who is like 32, is like, I've been sleeping with a 16 year old. I'm grossed out. And then I'm grossed out too. He's grossed out. I'm grossed out. And then you're even more grossed out by the fact that probably every man that she's slept with has been twice her age. And, and but I'm just like, why, why does it matter? Uh, she never truly convinced me that that was important because this whole, even though there's a lack of relationship between Dimphna and Kelpie, it is sort of a, a parent child relationship in which Dimphna is constantly taking care of Kelpie. She is making sure Kelpie stays out of trouble. So I was like, so now why do they have to be the same age? That just was something that I, I thought was an unnecessary addition. Now to the ghosts. Given that the crux of the novel revolves around two women who can see ghosts, you'd think that ghosts would play a more important part in this book. But there were so many times where Labastier 
included a ghost thing. And then it felt like she had no real explanation for why it was there. So she literally just said, I, I can't explain it. it. That's just the way it is. How did, how did she get away with that? Like, so Kelby, she recognizes that there are some ghosts that she should stay away from. But there was one ghost in particular who had a very large impact on her life, and that was a woman named Miss Lee. And unlike a number of other ghosts, sorry, I'm super itchy lately. Unlike a number of other ghosts who can only stay in one place, like the ghost that led Kelpie to the apples, he is stuck in an alley because I guess it's where he was born and also where he died. Or, you know, Jimmy Palmer can move around because he's attached to Dymphna, but he can't go anywhere else. Like, he can only go where Dymphna goes. Or there's another boxer ghost that uh, Kelpie knows who can only stay at the building where he used to box. So, with Miss Lee, the question is, why can she move around? She's not attached to Kelpie. She's not seemingly attached to a, per a particular place. So... How is it that she can go wherever she wants? And Kelby says, hey, I asked her this. And she says, I don't know, basically. That was super unsatisfying. I, I just, or, or eventually the ghosts fade. We don't get a good idea as to, I mean, for me, the assumption is the ghost finish their unfinished business so then they're able to move on but even before that they're able to disappear and go somewhere else yet when kelby asks them where they go they're like we don't know again we, we don't know like why even include it if they don't know I, 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 it's just like why, why why like why do they even go somewhere like why don't they just hang around why don't they never disappear? I mean, there were some moments like Jimmy Palmer got really annoying after a while because he eventually figures out that Kelpie can see him. And so maybe this is why he does what he does. But like, he's always talking and he's talking at Dymphna. So he's not even addressing Kelpie, but he's talking at Dymphna. He will try to physically assault living people. Like, dude, I mean, honest, this book takes place over the course of a day, a day and a half, maybe two days. So maybe it just takes him a while to figure things out. But he never gets it that nobody can hear him. He can have no physical impact on the physical world. And so I, I just, I got really annoyed with him. But what would happen is if he got really angry, he would just disappear. So I was like, maybe him disappearing is because Laba, Laba Lestier got annoyed with him too. <laughs> I don't know, honestly. But then he would come back. So, I mean, but my, 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 my general question here is why do they have to disappear? What is the point of that when there is no explanation for where they go? Or And, and yeah, again, like in the end, eventually they fade away. Uh, I guess the deal with Miss Lee was before she died, she had started reading Great Expectations. And she did not fade away until Kelpie finished Great Expectation. And so in a sense, she attached herself to Kelpie and she helped Kelpie learn to read. So then Kelpie read Great Expectations and then Miss Lee could leave. So it's like, was Miss Lee using Kelpie? From Kelpie's point of view, Miss Lee was her parental figure. But if you look at it from afar, Really, Miss Lee was using Kelpie for her own aims. Or um, Old Ma, who was not Kelpie's mother, but she was the woman who raised Kelpie until she died. And I can't tell you why Old Ma faded away. I don't remember. But I don't remember it as being as cut and dry as Miss Lee, where there was uh, something was accomplished and then she could move on. But then there are, so so one thing that really frightens Kelpie is even though the ghosts can't physically harm her, I guess ghosts, I mean, there is, at least for her and Dymphna who see them, like they can feel a ghost if a ghost goes through them. 
And so there are certain places where there's a large gathering of spirits that Kelpie does not want to go near because she does have physical effects and I guess maybe there's like mental and emotional effects of these ghosts being there. I never, I just, I don't, I don't get it. Like to me, it's more that Kelpie doesn't know how to deal with so much going around her. But why are all of these ghosts in one place? You know, for the most part, I had the impression that the ghosts could not see each other. But then there were instances where Jimmy Palmer was like, oh, am I going to turn into a ghost like that who is basically faded away anyways, like to the point that you don't know if they're young or old, if they're man or woman. Or um, at the end of the book when Mr. Davidson finally catches up to Dimphna and they get in his carriage and there's a ghost of a young woman in there and she and Jimmy start having a conversation and she's like, you're the first person I've been able to talk to since I died. And so uh, you, you do eventually realize that ghosts can see each other, but it's just like, what are these ghosts doing just hanging around? I mean, d d like, for, Dymphna guesses that some places have had something really awful happen in them, and then that attracts other ghosts, and that's how some places just have an accumulation of them. But I just, like, there are just so many aspects of the ghost part that didn't make sense to me, and I felt brought the novel down because it was about ghosts. It was about the fact that these two women can see ghosts, but then no explanation. Like there's no point to these ghosts. So as I said, my, my summary of this book was very vague and that's because Jimmy Palmer is dead, right? And for, for initially, Dymphna and Kelpie are running because they don't want to be caught by the police. And then Dymphna is like, where do I go? Because she doesn't know if Gloriana or Mr. Davidson has figured out hers and Jimmy's plot to overthrow them. And so she's like, do I run? Do I go to Gloriana? Like, what do I do? Who knows what? And so she... She eventually decides, all right, I'm going to go to Gloriana. Although the whole time, Jimmy Palmer's like, don't do it, don't do it. And I guess the whole point of that is to create tension for the reader, to cause confusion for the reader, because the reader's like, who should she trust? Who she, who should she not trust? So, so eventually, yes, Dimphna goes to Gloriana, and then, um, but she's still being pursued by Mr. Davidson, who, like, I feel like this is a huge buildup that has an even bigger letdown. And because we don't really know what Mr. Davidson wants. We know he's dangerous. We know he's been pursuing her for some time, but we don't really know what his end game is. Does it have something to do with Dimpness plants? Does it have something to do with Jimmy Nelson? Like, does it have something to do with something else? Does he just want her physically? And so eventually, spoiler, right? I guess we get to the climax where he finally gets his hands on Dymphna. So it's, it's Dymphna, Neil Darcy, Kelpie, Jimmy Palmer. So they all get into his car and they go to his estate. And this is where we meet the ghost in his carriage who I thought had so much more potential than she was given because she was, I consider her, Diffna's forerunner. Her name is Annie Darling, and apparently while Gloriana Nelson will get her hands dirty, Mr. Davidson never actually kills anybody himself, but he killed her. She said that he shot her head clean off and he couldn't get her brains out of his upholstery, so he had to up re-upholster the entire carriage. So here am I thinking, here's another piece of the puzzle. She's gonna really shed some light on what's gonna happen and she doesn't. She's just a dead ghost in a carriage that nobody knows is there. Anyways, so they go to Mr. Davidson's estate, and all he wants is to marry Dymphna? And I was like, mm, there's got to be more to it. Like, he is a nefarious fella. This can't just be about 
Mr. Davidson wanting to marry the most beautiful, most sought after prostitute in the city because especially he doesn't know Dimphna. Like she has been keeping out of his reach essentially since she got to the city, which has been, I don't know, a handful of years, five years maybe. Like he knows nothing about her except the exterior. So I'm like, why, why does he want to marry her? But yes, so there's the big revelation. Mr. Davidson has been coming after her because he wants to make an honest woman out of her. And she's like, you're joking, right? So anyways, and here's a spoiler, Darcy ends up getting killed because Davidson, like, here's my ultimatum. And Dimpton is like, I think not. And so then he just kills Darcy which I thought was, again, anticlimactic. And then he gets killed himself. And I was like, that was it? This entire novel, we have this cloud of Mr. Davidson hanging over us. Just to learn, his motive is to coerce Dimphna into marrying him, only to die. It was the most unsatisfying ending ever, guys. Like, you know... Despite the fact that I did have trouble getting into the novel every time I came back to it, when I was in the novel, I quite enjoyed the storytelling. But then we had this massive build up to something that just fell flat. When Davidson picks Dim from the End Company up, she is at Gloriana Nelson's house because every year Gloriana Nelson throws this massive party. And so she's at the house and the police have come because they still want to talk to Dimphna. And this other guy who is one of Gloriana's like head honchos, he he comes with the shotgun. And so so then Gloriana goes to talk to them. And at this point, when everybody's distracted, Dimphna is saying, hey, let's get out of here. So you, you hear shots ring out. And you're like, well, is Gloriana alive or dead? And we, we never we never know. Like, the, um, the few henchmen who are at Mr. Davidson's, when the idea is brought up, because there's, there's another person, another kind of player, another piece in this game, named Snowy, who has been another parental figure in Kelpie's life. And spoiler alert, we learn that he is actually her father, but he is a black man. And so after Mr. Davidson has died, so Snowy is like Mr. Davidson's right-hand man. So after Davidson is dead, we basically have two options of uh, someone who can take over Mr. Davidson's place. And that is Snowy or Dimphna. But these other henchmen are like, well, nobody's going to listen to Snowy because he's a black man. Nobody's going to listen to Dimphna because she's a woman. Basically, neither one of your plans are going to work. So then Dimphna, Snowy, and Kelpie just get out of Dodge. They just leave. So you're like, so we have this huge buildup for Mr. Davidson that just falls flat. And then we never learn Gloriana's fate, so there's that too. And then the three of them just leave, which is fine. Like, you know, they don't have to be kingpins of the underworld. Like, I don't care. But I was, I was just like, okay, okay. You know, like, sometimes you just have that reaction where you're like, that was it? That we're done? Okay. So yeah, like the ending just wasn't satisfying. I thought that after all this build up, it went nowhere. And that's a huge problem for me. I, I was glad that we finally established the connection between Snowy and Kelpie because old Ma had raised Kelpie under the assumption that her parents had died when she was born. And so eventually we do learn that it was Snowy who he had gotten a girl pregnant and he's a black man and she was a white girl. And I don't really know what would have happened. It's the 1930s, probably nothing good. But anyway, she died in childbirth. So I guess Kelpie, like there's a lot of mention made towards her skin color, but I guess you don't really understand the significance of it until you realize that she is Snowy's daughter. And so I kind of would have liked a little bit more about that because you get the impression that Snowy is in and out of jail a lot. Like he is someone that Kelpie can go to when she's in need, but every time she's in need, he's in jail. So I was like, 
I don't understand why it's even important that he's her father when he wasn't able to even take care of her because he was in and out of jail the whole time. So there's just a lot of things in this book that you, you give a little bit of and then you get nothing else. Like, Dymphna's dead boyfriends, okay? Who killed them? What Was it Gloriana? Was it Mr. Davidson? Like, who, or even, who killed Jimmy Palmer? Because Jimmy Palmer is like, Snowy killed me. But Kelpie's like, no, Snowy couldn't have killed you because he's not that kind of guy. But also, Snowy couldn't have killed you because he's not big enough to have killed you. So who, who killed Jimmy Palmer? Why, why even make a big deal out of it except, again, to create doubt? as to should we trust Snowy? Because he does come, kind of come in and out of the story and you're like, should they go with Snowy? Should Kelpie go with Snowy? Should they trust him when he comes and kind of rescues them from situations? Like, you know, is, is he a good guy? Is he a bad guy? So maybe, maybe that's the deal. Maybe that's why Jimmy Palmer blames it on Snowy. We never get a full explanation. But again, we also never get a full explanation as to why Dimna's boyfriends keep dying. Like, is it Mr. Davidson because he's jealous? Or is it because her boyfriends tend to be Gloriana Nelson's henchmen, like top dogs? And so it's also Mr. Davidson trying to cut Gloriana's feet out from under her? But yeah, I, I don't know. It's never explained. I feel like there's this huge deal made out of it, and then we get nothing. So there's a pattern here, guys. Like, I, I really, I really I want to re-emphasize this is a good read. There are just so many loose ends and that never get tied up for my personal preference. So now that I've talked about what I don't like, let me talk about what I do like. And that is, so th th this took me a little bit of adjustment. So Kelpie and Dymphna both are perspective characters, they're both narrators, but then basically between every one of their perspectives, we get a little vignette. Let me find one for you. We have Diffna, and then the next little chapter is Old Ma, which you, you cannot see. Old Ma. What, what happens is you get this perspective, not perspective, but it's like an omniscient narrator comes in and gives you a little bit of an explanation about something that would have been inappropriate for Kelpie or Diffna to have told us. So in the instance of old ma we've been told some about her by by kelpie like we've been told what kelpie knows about her but there's so much that kelpie doesn't know that then when we get this little vignette chapter we really understand who she was how she died you know the kind of ins and outs of that and and that's also how we get to know more about Dymphna or more about Mr. Davidson or more about Gloriana. So it takes a little getting used to because you're like, where did this come from? What does this have to do with anything? But in the end, it really helps to provide more depth to the story to help to flesh out a lot of characters or even about um, situations like towards the end when Dymphna is at Gloriana Nelson's party, we get this little aside about the betting system in this town and how you can basically bet on anything. At the moment, everybody is betting on if Dymphna is going to survive the night. And you're like, why are we talking about betting? Where did that come from? But it just kind of goes to serve as to What's going to happen with Dymphna? Will she survive the night? What side is she going to choose? How is the story going to end up? But what we discover is that she doesn't end up with Gloriana. She doesn't end up with Mr. Davidson. She doesn't end up as a kingpin. She does. She survives and she gets away in the most unexpected way possible. And so, yeah, like there are just moments where like, mm, what? but it all just comes together and makes sense in the end. And I grew to like those chapters almost more than Dymphna and Kelpie's because you don't get a lot of information from those two. You, you just don't. And for me, I like my information. That's why I, I read the end of the book before I get like this far into the book. <laughs> I just, I just like to know what's happening. I like, like I was saying, a lot of the loose ends 
I feel like those little vignette chapters gave me the answers I was searching for. As far as the writing goes, I thought it was great. There are a number of terms that I didn't understand, but that's because I'm not Australian, and that's because I guess some of them are so outdated they're not actually used anymore, but she does include a little index, in, a little dictionary in the back, which was really helpful. Granted, I was able to figure some of them out by myself, but it was really nice to look at the back and be like, oh, I had that wrong. <laughs> Even though you didn't know where we were headed, you knew there was a sense of urgency. You knew you didn't know who you could trust or even kind of who you liked or who you didn't like or who you were rooting for. You didn't know like what was Kelpie's true parentage. Where did Dimpna come from? Who killed Dimpna's boyfriends? Are they really in danger? Should they go see Gloriana? Are they ever going to get the ghost thing sorted out? Which, on that note, I guess they do. So, you know, at the point where they go to Gloriana's house for the party, eventually Dimpna, you guys, like, I just, I just can't when it comes to this. She leans over to, to Kelpie and she's like, just ignore them. Just focus on some other point. Pretend they're not there. That's her grand advice? Pretend they're not there? <laughs> I mean, Kelpie has been trying that. I guess the advice of focus on something that's actually there is what gets Kelpie through it. But I was like, that's it? <laughs> I, 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 I just... I guess for Dimpna, she's been practicing this for so long that she really is able to ignore everything else. But I was like, I waited the entire book for that. Okay. <laughs> um, you know, there's just a lot of things where you just, you're just wondering, is it a good thing? Is it a bad thing? Should they leave? Should they stay? Should they go? Are they gonna get caught? So it was really good pacing, really good atmosphere, effective writing, good characterization. If you've seen my Kate Morton videos, you'll know, or video, I don't know how many I've put up by this point, but you'll know that something that she does really well is that she ends on a cliffhanger and usually I'm like, are we ever going to get an answer for it? But even though she hangs on cliffhanger here, she starts with an answer here. So I almost forget that we have a cliffhanger because she does give me more just for something else. So that's something that La Balestier does very well. I, I recommend it. It's definitely a book that in a way it has a lot of intricacies that would take me far too long to actually explain here. I will tell you, so Dimphna, so again, we don't know why people can see ghosts, and Kelpie has been able to see them since birth. Dimphna could not see them, I don't know, I think she was 10 or 11, and I wish there's more on this as well, but she, I think she was raised in a wealthy family, wealthy of sorts, but, so she had a mother, two twin sisters, and then her father, and one day her dad just decides that he's gonna chop them all to pieces. So he kills her mom, he kills her sisters, but then she kills him before she, he can kill her. And that is the point where she can start seeing ghosts because he turns into a ghost. Thankfully, he is stuck at the house. But I was just like, super tragic. I kind of love it in a super morbid way, but that's it? Why did he lose his mind? Apparently he wasn't that great of a guy. He was physically and emotionally abusive. So maybe just one day he snapped. But I don't know. Again, it's just one of those those times where she gives you something and she doesn't quite follow through. But you can make your own decision based off of this review. I think if I were watching it, I would probably be like, I'm not reading that book. It sounds terrible. But the writing does save it. It is a really engaging story once you get into it. I would say I'm glad I checked it out of the library rather than buying it. In a sense, it's a mediocre book. I don't regret reading it. You know, there's a lot of books where I'm like, that was a waste of my time. But I read this book 
basically in three installments. I just finished the book because I kept having stopping points and then I kept blowing past my stopping points, which is a good thing. Like, if you can't stop reading a book, that's a good thing, all right? So it took me a little while to get into it, but once I was into it, it was really hard to stop. I really only stopped because I was too tired to keep going. Check it out, let me know what you agree or disagree with because reading is subjective. That's all I can say to that. Have a great day and I'll see you later. Bye.